останні ми тижні ми, ми чули про розвиток України очима українців, а сьогодні маємо приємність вітати в студії керівника Європейського банку реконструкції та розвитку в Києві Франсис Медіж і почути все з іншої, можливо, об'єктивнішої сторони. Ідеї, зусилля, успіх. Спонзоровані українською кредитовою спілкою. Дорогі глядачі, добрий вечір. Маємо нагоду тут розмовляти із представником Європейського банку реконструкції і розвитку, який є найбільшим, так би мовити, інвестором в Україні дотепер. Містер Франсіс Маліж, welcome to our show. Thank I you. just introduced you as the biggest investor in Ukraine so far. So, uh, so you know we're, we're presenting you quite, quite properly. Thank you. Thank so, you. We are indeed the <laughs> are largest indeed. investor we've uh, over th we created. We, are, we have the same age as Ukraine. We were created in 1991. Uh, and so we also celebrated our 25th anniversary this year. Uh -huh. And since we started investing in Ukraine, we've invested uh, close to 12 billion euros. Uh, so that's a bit more in US dollars, let's say 13, uh, 14 billion US dollars in the uh, Ukrainian economy. Mostly in the private sector, actually. We do uh, about uh, 25 percent, between 25 and 30 percent of our business has been with the um, public sector and the rest with the private sector. So we're really a bank that invests with the, the, the uh, entrepreneurs, with the Ukrainian uh, real economy uh, in, across the country actually from uh, Lviv to Kharkiv, uh, not just all in, 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 in Kiev. Well, that's, I think that's very interesting and that means that, um, that obviously you see a potential uh, in Ukraine. And before, before we return to that topic, I would like to just ask you for the benefit of myself and also our viewers, what is, what is the financial benefit or what, what happens when sanctions are in place? Like right now we have sanctions against Russia, before there were sanctions against Iran for many, many years. Do these sanctions work in a financial way at all or is it just politics? Well, they, they have an impact, clearly. Yeah. Uh, depends on what they touch and how tight they are. Uh, but clearly, typically, they, they, they limit uh, trade flows. Uh, and by the way, right now, there's also uh, limitations on trade, for example, between Ukraine and Russia. And we know that it also has an impact on the Ukrainian economy. I have clients in Ukraine who have, who've actually had to reorient completely their exports. Uh, they exported a lot of their exports to the Russian market and now they're exporting to Egypt and to Ghana and to the European Union and they've had to do it because the, the, the market has, uh, has become close for them. So th these sanctions have an impact. Um, of course, uh, uh, they are th the impact of things like, for example, the, the drop in the price of oil on an economy like Iran or Russia is, 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 is bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's get back to Ukraine because we hear uh, we hear much talk uh, that uh, Ukraine is sort of a different world that uh, things aren't developed enough for for real investments. Uh, could you tell us what would you say is the prime prime suspect for for potential investment in uh, in, in Ukraine? Look, it's true that it's a different environment. It's a difficult investment environment, uh, just like many other emerging markets, frankly. Uh, so you don't have the same level of security, you don't have the same competence in the courts, in the uh, uh, legal system and so on that you find here at home. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's, a, there's not an opportunity. Uh, of course everybody speaks about the agribusiness uh, mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. in Ukraine and that's a function of it's always been a very fertile land and uh, so there's a lot of opportunities there. I see entrepreneurs in that, uh, in that area which are really uh, competent, uh, motivated and, and frankly having success at it. In, uh, in agriculture, is the benefit in owning the real estate or is the benefit in the production uh, of, of, the, uh, in, of the product? In Ukraine, I think the benefit and the name of the game has to be improve the value added of the product. Oh, it's one okay. thing to product grain, to produce grain, but producing the right quality uh, in a, in a pr foreseeable uh, uh, quantity and so on. If you have good and stable returns, you actually now we've developed together with others a scheme where you can borrow money on the basis of the crop that is growing. So oh, you borrow okay. the money that enables you to fund the crop that is growing and then when it's grown you can sell it but you've pre-financed your, your so and that is only possible if you can guarantee the quality 
uh, and the uh, and and the return the, the yield of your of your field so by in using irrigation techniques by using the proper seeds and so on you can get into a position where you can do business in a much more, more, more modern way there's also potential for things like uh, vegetables uh, fruits uh, flowers and so on and so forth but adding value into the uh, into the, the key, crops is, is is really the key what about ukraine now supposedly is the first place in terms of uh exporting sunflower oil and sunflower seeds is that that's, uh, that's great i'm sure there's but potential for being more it's <laughs> potential for more uh, but uh, and then but i'd like to talk uh, about other things than agriculture okay yes yes uh, because i think ukraine has as a great potential as an industrial nation uh, in fields like uh, technology and it uh, it is already a large offshoring uh, uh, place, and uh, there's very competent IT uh, people in Ukraine. In places like Lviv, Kharkiv are very, very, mm, frankly, we see a lot of investment there, and we see a lot of young, bright people that go into these industries. But also in the mechanical industry, this is a country which is in Europe and has a production cost that you find in China, essentially. So if you want to set up shop, yeah, and export into the European and has a free trade agreement with the European Union with zero tariffs. So if you want to set up shop and export products into the European Union, this is your dream manufacturing base. Okay? Uh, you need what, what Ukrainian business people need to do is they need to invest a bit in the marketing. Because you build a cheap product doesn't mean that people will li like it and will buy it. So you have to adapt it to the taste of the consumers of the markets where you want to sell. But the, the, the quality for cost position of Ukraine is very favorable right now, and there should be uh, more investment. The obstacle to investment, the number one when we ask people, is the corruption, the governance yes. issues in the country. And uh, it is possible uh, to do business in Ukraine without paying bribes. Our clients, we work with firms that do not pay bribes. Our clients tell us the secret is to never pay the first one. <laughs> because once you've they, paid the they first don't one, fall into the trap. Uh, they use the first one to force you to pay the second one. And so as long as you've not paid the first one, you're safe. Now, how do you not pay the first one? You make noise about it. One of the things that I like about Ukraine today is that when someone asks you for something like that, and you say, I'm not going to pay, but I'm not going to keep it between you and me. I'm going to go and talk to the ambassador of my country yeah, there's an excellent ambassador for Canada in, uh, in Ukraine. When you say, I'm going to talk to people like us, to the BRD, um, when you say, I'm going to talk to the media, people that want these kinds of things now go away. Uh -huh. And in Ukraine, we have actually funded, together with uh, donor countries of the BRD, an institution which is called the Business Ombudsman of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What is the Business Ombudsman? It's an office where Anybody can go, you have to be a company, but any company can go, you don't have to be foreign owned, you don't have to be large, no matter how small. When they have an issue with the tax service, with the custom service, with a license, with a municipality, with the SBU and so on, uh, they, um, they go to the business ombudsman and the business ombudsman investigates. And then contacts the, the, the service in the administration and says, why is this happening? Why have you done this? What's and in many cases, what we see is that this is enough to stop the corruption because people see it's coming under the spotlight. So it's, uh, it started, the business ombudsman started in April of 15, uh, of 2015, was the first new institution anti-corruption that came to life after the revolution. And since then, it's already dealt with more than 1,100 complaints by firms. Uh, and it's resolved a number of them, returning more than I think the number is three and a half billion grivnia, uh, so more than 100 million uh, US dollars to these firms in Ukraine, essentially in back taxes that they were owed and they couldn't get reimbursed and, and so on. So it's a success. It's another tool through which firms can go and, 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 and claim what they are uh, uh, rightly, uh, rightly owed. What, what would be some of the other industries that you think can, you know, that have potential in Ukraine? Well, Developing the potential for manufacturing, okay. for IT and for agriculture, I think the three top. Th those are the three top. What about the financial industry? We notice, for example, banks, they offer tremendous interest rates in comparison to what's happening here. Why is that? Why is there such a difference? 
Um, well, perhaps because it's a bit riskier to invest in, <laughs> ah. in a Ukrainian bank than it is in a Canadian bank. Um, but uh, I think it's a question of the market. There was a situation in the market where there was too, f too many banks chasing too few deposits. So of course the banks increase the price that they pay to people. And they will tell them, yeah, but you know, you can come to me, you don't need to pay attention how solid I am because uh, there's a deposit insurance scheme, therefore, you know, you mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. feel free to give your money to me. It's not as simple as that. And the central bank has done a tremendous job, actually, of cleaning up the banking sector. If you've followed the banking sector, you will have seen that there were 180 banks in Ukraine two years ago. That's way too many. Uh, and there's now 100 left. Mm -hmm. So you could debate, maybe it's still too many, but it's still much, much better than, than two years ago. And a lot of the banks that have been closed down were frankly engaged in money laundering, corruption, being the pocket bank for someone. Um, and uh, as soon as you had a little bit of money in Ukraine, you created your own bank. And many people used it not to be doing banking business, but to actually take the deposits and give them to themselves uh, to, in the form of lending to their own companies. And that is a practice that now is much, much, much more uh, limited in Ukraine. Uh, and thanks to the work that the central bank has done, we've helped. We've put technical assistance, we've uh, supported this effort, but it's one of the things that has been successful in Ukraine. And it's really important because in a well-functioning economy, banks are like the blood system. The companies yes, the are the muscles, the flow, yes. but if the blood does not flow to the muscles, the companies cannot do their work. And so now we are coming back to a situation in Ukraine where we're going to have gradually a properly functioning banking system, which was not the case two years ago. Mr. Malij, you, you're here in Toronto and you're visiting a lot of our institutions. Maybe you've said it already, but in case you haven't, what is your most important message that you say in, in your presentations to the various groups that you meet here? I think Ukraine has changed more than we think. Uh, we typically hear the bad news, but Ukraine has changed more than we think. It's a country where people can come and invest, and investment is the key to the success of the reforms in the country. Because without investment, there will not be growth, and without growth, the reforms will fail. And so uh, it is in Ukraine's interest, but it's also in all of these countries' interests who have a keen interest on Ukraine, and I know Canada is one of them, to make sure that the reforms succeed in Ukraine. The best way to do this is to bring professional investment into the country.